Hello, what is going on, guys? Hockey Guy one here. Welcome to my review of Batman v Superman: Dawn of Justice. So you may remember a couple of years ago, I may, I did review this movie, kind of praising it. But honestly, the reason why I'm doing re, re, redoing this review is because because uh, well, my opinion has completely changed on it. And I realized the flaws with it, so you'll see. So, you know, yeah, I won't really be praising this. This, and, yeah. Yeah, I got no, not lately, because at the time I was kind of feeling boring on DC. And, uh, and uh, watching it now, I definitely do realize the problems more. That's why I'm re revealing this, and I, may, I might even delete my original review. But anyways... Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice is directed by Zack Snyder and stars Ben Affleck, Henry Cavill, Jesse Eisenberg, Amy Adams, Diane Lane, Jeremy Irons, and Gal Gadot. So the story kind of takes place as a direct sequel to Man of Steel and it, is, and it kind of shows... It was Bruce Wayne's perspective on the battle with on the battle of Zod, and and that's honestly I can't really explain much the story. It's barely a story, and and Lex Luthor kind of well manipulates Bruce and and Clark all movie and and. And just gets to um, fight each other. It's, there's a lot of filler in the middle. It's about the best way I can describe this mess of a story. So as for my positives, Ben Affleck's easily the best part of this. He he was a perfect choice for this role, and he definitely looked like he was into it. And he gave a great performance for sure, despite him having to deliver. Some, some terrible lines that I'll get to later. And the Batman suit, so that they used for this, like this Batman suit, for sure, and kind of the other shit, Iron suit that they used in this battle with Superman. I mean, both of them are pretty good, but I'm more talking about the main one. That I mean, it looks great, and it definitely brings the Dark Knight Return, Burns, Burns costume to the big screen. Like not obviously this is kind of a job, but it it looks it's a, it's a great incarnation of it, and I'm kind of glad they brought the big screen as well as they did. Gal Gadot, well, she wasn't really in the movie very often, uh, and I thought she did a pretty good job. It's like her character kind of being unnecessary, but I'll get up to that later. And Jeremy Irons did a pretty great job of what he was given. Is he the best Alfred? Is he the best best version of Alfred? Not really, but he's pretty good. This Alfred's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, that's about all the positives I can give this movie. And as for my negatives, oh my god, here we go. Oh, the story. What a mess. Like, you could tell just from my explanation. I could barely explain it. It's, it's just a mess. It overstuffs so many comic book stories, like it tries to be a Batman standalone at the same time as a Superman standalone, at the same time as a Dark Knight Returns style story, at the same time as a Justice League setup, at the same time as the Death of Superman kind of story. It's a mess. Like, like I don't know what Zack Snyder was thinking when making this, but obviously he just like uh, overstuff a lot. How uh, my story is, yeah, we just need to get to Justice League so we can catch up to Marvel. So, um, we don't need it. We don't need any of that. <laughs> Forget about the future. Just stuff it all into one movie. And the pacing is just atrocious. I get so bored throughout this movie. It gets just atrocious. I mean, it's not just the overstuffed story that's bad about the pacing. It, it has way too many flashbacks and dream sequences that it completely messes with with it and makes the movie so, go on so slowly and just isn't, just 
nothing but filler is the best way I can describe it. These dream sequences. I mean, I mean, they're they're just unnecessary. It messes with the pacing and just makes the movie even more boring and draggy than it already is. And the way they introduced the Justice League, don't even get me started with that. That was just terrible. It's like, literally, it's just an email attachment just showing a, showing a couple of videos and photos of each each member member without even caring caring about the about developing the character. Or it's they just did that to, to get to rush into a Justice League movie movie and just couldn't I couldn't find any better way to do it than to, obviously because they just wanted to catch up to Marvel and so they decided to be lazy instead of actually developing their characters like Marvel and just rushing them straight into it. It's a mess what they did. And they ruined Batman's character. I mean, Ben Affleck did a great job, but his character, on the other hand, n yeah, it's awful. I mean, they just made him a killer, and it's just ridiculous. Like, making Batman a killer, it doesn't matter how you do it, it's it's not justified in any way. Like, some people try to justify it by saying he did it in his early comics, which is true. He did do it in his er early comics, but ever since... Since then, he hasn't done it, and this isn't really meant to be the Batman from that movie. This is meant to be the Batman, based off the Bat, loosely based off Batman from The Dark Knight Returns, and and he doesn't kill in that comic. Like, so I don't really feel like that's a good justification that some people use, but uh, I mean, I'm not saying it's bad for you to feel like that was killing, but I just. As a fan of Batman, I don't like how they made him a killer, and it's just that outrageous. Like in the Dark Knight, he did kill Harvey Dent. I can see, it. like, like, but that was actually just justified because he had, because he had no other choice. Like, like that's the only way how Batman's killing could be justified is if, is if he had no other choice. Here, he didn't have it. He did have a lot more other choices than just killing people in the warehouse scene. I mean, which could have been an awesome action scene, despite the fact that they just made Batman go out and kill, killed. So it kind of ruined what was an awesome action scene, scene for me. And yeah, I just don't like how they did that. That Martha scene, though, oh my God, was that terrible! It was just save Martha. Why did you say that name, Martha? Why did you say that name? It's his mother's name. It's just so cringy. I mean, it's it's just terrible writing on on Zack Snyder's part, and this couldn't have been in a worse way, worse written scene, worse written dialogue. It's like it's it's terrible, terrible. I mean, it's cringy in every way. It's making Batman do it. <laughs> just keep whining about about his mom. Um, his mother and father's death is just ridiculous in every way to begin with, and like I said, kind of ruined his character a little more because he he never does that. It's that's not a bat, Batman thing to do. So making him do that is uh, ridiculous, and just the scene just wasn't delivered very very well either. It doesn't really help when when Henry Cavill didn't deliver Save Martha correctly, which I guess is completely on him, him because that. Because that line would be cringy either way, even if it was delivered right. But still, the scene is just terrible. I cannot say anything else. I cringe every time I watch the film, and film, especially at that moment. It's just a terrible, just some of the worst writing I've seen in in a comic book movie. And Wonder Woman, she didn't even need to be in this movie. Movie, well, Gal Gadot did give a good performance, I can give it that, but still. Wonder Woman was useless. Why on earth is she even in here, other than a Justice League setup? Like, they didn't need to put her in this in this movie whatsoever. If they left her out of that, that third act, it would be no different. There's no reason for her to be in here, other than a Justice League setup. She's just... 
useless and it didn't need to be in this movie. And Superman's character was developed terribly again, but honestly, might even be even worse this time, uh, in all honesty. It might even be even worse this time. I'm like, like they just made him a manipul very manipulated, easily manipulated guy who was, a, was very whiny and reminds me honestly of how terrible Anakin's character from Attack of the Clones was developed. Oh, just, honestly, that's probably the easiest comparison I can get to because of how terrible his character was in this. It's, it's just awful. Um, that they did with him, making him being very manipulative and whiny, and it's really helped when a lot of times Henry Cavill is, doesn't really deliver his line, line very confidently because because he's not very good, good with the terrible script he's given. Sure, but he still doesn't really deliver the lines really well. And Lex Luthor is just a terrible villain. He this is easily the worst character of of Lex Luthor yet. Yeah, I I want Gene Hackman and Kevin Spacey's or just Kevin Spacey's Lex Luthor back because those both of them those are Lex Luthor. The way Lex Luthor was in Superman the movie was perfect. Here he's just awful. He just has this his plan that was terrible every way and just full Full of convenience, that's about the only way you can describe the plan, because it's just convenience, and he's not really an intimidating villain, he's just a manipulator, and nothing really much. He's a terrible villain, they did him so much better in Superman the movie, and Superman Returns, it, like, they, they really could have done so much better with him here, but unfortunately, he ended up sucking. But it also doesn't help when Jesse Eisenberg could have been a worse casting choice for him. Like seriously, who on earth thought it was a good idea to get a, to cast Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor? He he certainly was terrible. He was over the top and just terrible. It didn't even look like he he was playing Lex Luthor. It looked like he was playing a completely different character of how terrible he was. And this, and these, it's awful. And the visual effects are just terrible. I mean, you can't, they can't even give it that this time. I mean, the visual effects are just awful. <clears throat> like, seriously. Like, like, looking at Doomsday, Doomsday, he looks so terrible. He looks more like one of those trolls from Lord of the Rings than Doomsday. Doomsday, and it's this terrible CGI, and... The CGI is just terrible. You see, and like, like it ruins most of the action scenes because it overuses it in just about every single action scene, and it doesn't help when it looks terrible in just about every single action scene it's used in. And it should have done so much better with this. It, like I'm pretty sure this is a high budget movie, and they could have done so much better with these visuals, but. But unfortunately, Zack Snyder's here to mess up things again. And the Martha and Thomas Wayne death scene, scene was just completely ruined by that overuse of of slow motion that Zack Snyder still hasn't learned doesn't doesn't work after he put it in three hundred. The at one time it didn't it didn't work there, so I don't know why on on earth he thought it work work for a Thomas Wayne and and Martha Wayne death scene. It just overuses it and ruins the moment because cause it did not need that much slow motion. It just made the cinematography look awful and just it, it ruins the emotional moment. That's the best, that's something I can say, I can describe it as. It does a Superman type of, type of story like I already mentioned for one of the many comic book book stories that they decided to stuff into this one movie and. It, like I keep saying, it does not need to be in here. It's completely unnecessary. They could have waited into the future to, to throw, in, throw in this type of story. Because, because Doomsday did not need to be in here. He, 
she's not even close to being as awesome as she is in the comics. Uh, she's she's just weak, weak and terrible, and just thrown in there to so the third act could could finish, and and just for more filler because they need the Justice League movie they decide to kill off Superman when they're trying to try to set up Justice League again, expecting me to feel emotion for it. Like, it makes no sense. Killing off Superman. Well, and just, I... Immediately when that happened, I'm like, yeah, he's being resurrected. Resurrected in Justice League. This is not an emotional mo What I call an emotional moment. It's just... Not sad. And... Doesn't work at all. Uh, it's just terrible because... Because, honestly... We all knew he was being resurrected because of how terrible of, of a scene of an act this was and how unnecessary it was. They really did not need to put this in in here, like I keep saying, and did not need to make him get killed off in the, in the second movie of this franchise, or this poor excuse that is called a franchise, I should say. But, yeah, it's just, I thought about all I could say about this thing. It's just stupid. So, overall, Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice is a terrible movie and another terrible installment in the DC Extended Universe. I might per prefer this a little more than Man of Steel, but that's not saying much. And I'm going to give Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice a 3.5 out of 10. That was my review of Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. What are your thoughts on Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice? Tell me in the comments below. And I'd like to thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you next time. Bye.